Teens are addicted to TikTok, and it's kind of sad. For those who don't know, TikTok is an app that lets users create short videos of themselves dancing, doing comedy, and just doing anything in general. TikTok's official website puts it like this. TikTok is a leading destination for short form mobile video. Our mission is to inspire creativity and bring joy. Bring joy is great, but a lot of teens are horribly addicted to this app. I've used TikTok in the past, and like all other forms of social media, I slowly but surely found myself being sucked into the abyss of what definitely seemed very close to addiction. And I'm not alone in this. Cornell University sophomore Nico Nguyen wrote an entire essay on why he felt like he needed to delete TikTok to feel free. And I completely agree with what he says. Everybody has TikTok these days, and it really does permeate through my everyday life. I don't know how many times my friends have come to me complaining about how they spent three hours on TikTok doing nothing and just procrastinating and sleeping at ungodly hours as a result. And to be completely honest, I did that too. I wanted to know why my friends and I had to suffer through this addiction. So I decided to do some investigating. that it's less about addiction and more about your social needs. So let's talk about FOMO, the fear of missing out. Classic example, you're on Instagram and you're scrolling through your feed and then you come across a photo of all your friends having a bunch of fun, but then you're not in that photo. So you become sad and worried even. How come you weren't invited? Why aren't you in that photo? But FOMO could be so much more than just feeling excluded on Instagram. It's the fear of missing out on everything that you don't have. And that fear of missing out can actually get associated with regret, which will contaminate your ideas about the future. In the 1990s, psychologists Timothy Wilson and Daniel Gilbert came up with the term effective forecasting. It's basically when you predict how you are going to feel in the future. What Wilson and Gilbert found was that people have the tendency to overestimate the impact that a certain situation will have on their emotional reactions. So your imagination of how much despair you'll be in for not having gone to that party is just that, imaginary. Put simply, we're all drama queens. Now, there's this theory called the self-determination theory, or SDT for short. According to SDT, our psychological well-being is determined by three psychological needs that must be fulfilled. Competence, autonomy, and relatedness. Professor Andrew Shabilsky from Oxford University says that FOMO is just a self-regulatory limbo that arises from a lack of psychological satisfactions. FOMO is just a middleman between social media engagement and psychological deficits. And that makes sense. For a long time, before I downloaded TikTok, I was always left out because all my friends would be doing TikTok dances by themselves and they would just all fall over laughing and I would be the only one that didn't get the reference. It's kind of a stupid thing to feel left out about, but I felt really excluded. And when I finally downloaded TikTok, I felt a giant sense of relief because now I felt like I can engage in these trends. You know, I, I don't have to be left out anymore. But here is the thing about trends. Humans rely on signals of popularity, meaning that if one group of humans does one thing, well, it's gotta be good, right? And this has evolutionary origin. Humans that formed connections and had a tendency to conform survived more often than those that didn't. In other words, our actions rely heavily on the actions of others. And trends are manifestations of that very desire to conform. TikTok dances and sounds are really no different. TikTok even has its own celebrities. So they set a trend, then we follow them together. And ultimately, that is all that matters being together, being part of a group. So, okay, now we know about FOMO. Let's talk about addiction, and not just addiction to TikTok, but addiction to technology and devices and smartphones. We talk about smartphone addiction so often that we don't even doubt that it's real, but it's not. Smartphone addiction isn't technically a real thing. Our brain likes novel things. Every time we experience something unexpected, the VTA releases dopamine to various regions of the brain, 
and you've probably heard about how dopamine plays a really important role in drug addiction. The phone provides us with surprise all the time, which is why it can feel so addicting. But labeling problematic device usage as addiction can come with its own negative consequences. Calling it addiction makes it seem like the victims are helpless, as if they have absolutely no control over their situation. It masks the true problems that might be underlying the addiction. For some, it could be something like depression, or anxiety, or ADHD. Now that's not to undermine the severity of this problem. I'm just saying that addiction might not be the best way to put it. Shabilsky himself says so. What it really boils down to is this. We are all desperate and lonely. We all have FOMO, which makes TikTok seem attractive because it makes us feel like we will finally be included in something. So you spend hours and hours on TikTok laughing, sending TikToks to your friends. Maybe you're lucky enough to already have achieved celebrity status on the app. Or maybe you want to become a celebrity. Or maybe you realize that you've just spent five hours scrolling endlessly through TikTok. And then you come to this realization of, oh no, I must be addicted. But here's the good news. You're probably not suffering through a horribly uncurable addiction. Nonetheless, here are some tips that I've gathered to help prevent you from spending an ungodly amount of time on TikTok and really just any social media app in general. Number one is to disable your notifications. Keep it to your text messages and your phone calls. Number two is to get rid of all the color on your phone. You can grayscale your phone display by going to accessibility settings in your phone and that way it won't make other apps like Instagram seem more appealing than others. Third is to adopt a live in the present mentality. Learning to appreciate the things that you have right now, just living in the present, can actually help you get over your FOMO. Obviously, some of these tips might take you a little bit longer to get used to, but knowing why exactly we are so attracted to these apps and knowing that we aren't helpless in solving these problems is really the best first step that we can take.